Bibles to Psalms chapter 12. And as you're making your way over there, I'm just I'm going to go even quicker on the review this time. The the further farther away it gets in the rearview mirror, I'm going to spend even less time reviewing everything, but uh, so far, we've looked at the makeup of honey, or continuing honey, honey part four. We've looked at the makeup of honey, what it is, the mockery of honey, what it is not, the mirage of honey, where you will not find it, the map of honey, where it is found, the means of honey, how to get it. We looked at the mess of honey, which is how not to get it. We looked at the machine of honey, and uh, where we left off last week, Remember, we were reading that article, and um, I'll, I'll, re- I'll just do this last part of the article we looked at. But that hasn't stopped the prevalence of denatured honey products in the market. Remember, there's, they're adding stuff to the, what they call honey, taking stuff out. The FDA won't detain adulterated honey imports as long as they're properly labeled. And with the cost of natural honey, remember, honey is the words of God. Hun- honey represents the words of God in Scripture. Going through the roof, it's only a matter of time before fake honey takes over the market. So is pure honey becoming harder to find? You can bet your bottom dollar it is with 7 out of 10 households chomping down on denatured honey products. Finding real honey in most stores is like finding a bee in a hornet nest. So today we're going to try to find some honey. I mean, we, we know where the honey is. But we're actually going to, in that same article that I told you about, they give you a number of ways how you can tell if the honey is pure or if it's adulterated. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fascinating stuff. So what I'm going to do is we're, uh, we're going to take that model on how they actually test honey to see if it's pure or not. We're going to apply it to the honey found in the words of God. We're going to apply it to scripture and let's see what happens. Amen. Amen. Worst case, you spend an hour looking at verses in the Bible. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So Psalms chapter 12. And let's start with verse 6. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6. The Bible says the words of the Lord are pure words. Amen. As silver tried in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times. Verse 7. Thou shalt keep them, the words, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them, the words, from this generation forever. All right, so we're going to go through how to tell the difference between real honey and adulterated honey. We see from that verse that the words of the Lord are pure. So question is, well, what if we see one honey source is not the same as another honey source? Are they both pure if they're different? That's a pretty simple question. So I brought these little guys here as an example. So you got, last week I kind of harped on this guy, so I'm sorry if you have this at home. But we looked at the honey, the honey last week, or what they call honey, how they package honey. We looked at, as long as it's properly labeled, the FDA won't check it out. So Maybe some of you, you know, when you go to get your Bible, you see a Bible that looks like this guy. And it's so, it's so cute, and it reminds uh, you of your teddy bear you had when you were a little kid. So you're, it's really comfortable. And look at this. I mean, this thing is it's full, so it's new. No one else used this one. Amen. Right? It just came out, fresh on the market. You want to get this new honey right here. You're going to get a lot of good stuff. It says 100% honey on it. It's got to be there. It's got to be the real thing. It says they wouldn't just put 100%, would they? We looked at what China was doing, how they're importing all this stuff. And it's not just China. All these people trying to make profits off of fake honey. So I'm not saying that this specific guy, so don't, I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to be nice here. But I'm just using it as an object lesson, right? Just because it looks (laughs) cuddly and cute and it makes you feel all fuzzy inside doesn't mean it's good for you. And then on the flip side, you might have this guy right here. Look at this guy. Look at this one. This one's like all, this one's all used right here, man. This is, I made an investment, amen? <laughs> Look at this. I mean, you could, someone's been through this. They've thrashed it. All the, almost all the honey is gone. So this stuff must be good, right? I mean, this is like looks kind of old. But, I mean, someone's used it. So, I mean, it stands to reason it must be good if someone's using it, right? 
if someone's reading a Bible, they might have it all marked up. It might be thrashed. They might be into it, taking notes, preaching out of it, using it, flipping it, trying to memorize stuff in it. It must be good, right? So then you got that guy right there. And then you got this guy. What is this right here, man? You don't know what it is. Is it, It's just like boring, kind of just like a little black, simple thing here. Just a, just a little black, simple thing here. You don't know what it is, just a black square. You don't know what's in it. You don't know if it's full. You don't know what it's full of. You don't know if it's empty. You don't know what it is until you what? Until you open it. Look inside. I did eat all of this one because this is real good, honey. <laughs> oh, it smells good too, still. Ooh, it smells. It smells really good. Okay, that'll be something later on. But it's a mystery. You don't know what. So the Bible says taste and see, right? Wow. We looked at all kinds of stuff before. I'm not going to go into it again. Uh, you know all the different ways how to get the honey and all this other stuff. Today, we're going to specifically focus on how to tell the difference if it's pure or if it's adulterated. And I do want to just give one little disclaimer. Last week I said, like, do the NIV and ESV, do they even have the word adultery in there? And thank God I left room. I'm like, hey, they could. I don't know. I looked it up. They do. So I'll give them credit where it's due. They have that word in there. So they should know the whole thou shalt not commit adultery thing. Right. They should know that, right? Don't adulterate stuff. Yeah. Okay. So good. They got that one. Okay. You know what the Bible says? In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So believe not every bottle of honey you come across. But try it and see if it's pure or not. Then there's ways you can actually test the honey to see if it's pure. And that's what we're doing here today. So that's a great verse right there. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. There's a lot of false prophets out there you got to watch out for that would steal that honey from you. So the first way to test the honey to see if it's genuine or not, it's called the thickness test. You check for thickness. And uh, the little excerpt from the article here says, most of the time, adulterated honey has higher water content compared to real honey, making it runny and light. You might say it's watered down. Before you buy that jar of honey, tilt it a bit and check how the honey moves. If it takes time to move, you're probably holding a jar of genuine honey. Yep. Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Those are all honey words. We looked at all those before. Mm -hmm. uh, but Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth. So don't buy a lie. Don't buy the fake honey, the fake words of God, buy the real thing and hang on to it. Don't sell it. Don't be a sellout. Amen. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Revelation chapter three, verse 18 says, this is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to the Laodicean church. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Why? That thou mayest be rich. So we saw in Psalms chapter 12 that the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. And the Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation 3.18 says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Why? That thou mayest be rich. So we're looking for something here that's been tried. It's gone through some stuff here. And now for our first test on the thickness, go over to 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8.
1 Kings chapter 8. And we're going to look at verse 10. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 10. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 10, And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Verse 11, so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Verse 12, then spake Solomon, the Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. So that's why, like, if, especially in the south, you know what they say? Like, in we, when we've had our blowouts or summer camp or whatever, and it just, it gets on, right? Like, this, the Holy Spirit, you, it was just came and wafted down, was running through the place. And you know what the, southern, the southerners will say? They're like, boy, it got thick. <laughs> it got thick in there last night, bless God. I'm not, I love you southerners. I know that wasn't a good southerner. But, but I've heard a lot of ba- southern Baptists say, you know, it got thick last night. And that's very interesting that they say that. That's good, and they get that from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Solomon there in verse 12 said, The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. Not the mist of darkness. That's for some other guy. Uh, So we're looking at a thickness thing here. We want something thick. When we tilt it, when we tilt the word of God, we don't want it to slish slosh around. We want it to take time to move. All right, 1 Corinthians 15. Turn over there. This is a good one here too. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Doesn't the Bible say something about like our Lord Jesus Christ is like the same yesterday, today, and forever? There's a saying, what is it? A lie runs, you know, all the way around the world while the truth is still getting its shoelaces on. The truth always comes out, brethren. Mm -hmm. There's nothing hid that should not be made manifest. So if I'm wrong, the Lord will show the Lord will show it eventually. And praise the Lord for it. I don't want to be wrong. You kidding me? I'm up here trying to teach the Bible. I don't want to be wrong. Amen. Oh, Lord, help me. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And look at verse 58. And this is following, most of you already know, but this is following discussion about the rapture, right? The rapture of the church, verse 52, 51, 52, 53, all through there. Now look in verse 58. So in, in, in light of the rapture, Fast approaching the Christian church. What should we be? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That verse said that we should be steadfast and unmovable in some things. Almost like it's telling us to be thick headed. Or closed-minded when it comes to some things. Amen. You better be closed-minded when it comes to some things. You don't want to be open-minded to all kinds, all the filth and all this stuff the world has to offer. And that verse also tells us that we ought to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. Remember last week I mentioned like busy little honeybees going all around, taking the word of God. And um, in, that, in this verse here, it's telling us that we should be always abounding in the work of the Lord while leading up to the rapture. That's the whole point. That's the context there. The rapture is close, so we got to get busy, brethren. So now my question is, in the last days of the church age, how can Christians, most Christians don't know that these are the last days of the church age, how can most Christians abound in the work of the Lord if they don't know that they have the actual True, pure words of the Lord. If I, if I can't bet my soul on the fact that everything here is true and right, and if it says it, I should do it. Mm-hmm. How can I possibly, how can I stay busy? How can I trust all of this and, and do all these things for the Lord? If I'm doubting the instructions I'm given. Mm-hmm. Kind of like one, one of the brothers' prayer requests today about what, you know, some people, uh, you know, at work, it almost seems like uh, someone's kind of wants him to trip up. Thank God we don't serve a God that wants us to fail. Amen. 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 So why would, my God's not going to tell me to do something wow. 
in one place and then completely contradict in another. And a lot of these honey sources contradict themselves, and we're going to look more about that today. If any of you, uh, turn over to Proverbs chapter 5. Uh, if you listen to uh, Final Fight Bible Radio, if you don't, you should check it out. It's great. It's an app on all the, every phone possible you can imagine probably. But Final Fight Bible Radio, uh, Brother Matt Crane runs a station and it plays, you know, on one channel they got 24 hours a day, good godly Christian music. Another channel they got good godly Christian preaching. They got one channel that's just the King James Bible just on a loop 24 hours a day. It's amazing stuff. And one of these little, you know, they got these little segments, and it's called the Battle of the Bibles. Have you heard of that? You'll hear like, ding, ding, ding. It's time for the 92nd Battle of the Bibles. <laughs> and it'll, it'll give you a verse from the King James Bible, and then it'll give you that same verse from the other Bibles. And so you can see pretty clearly, one, they're not the same. Two, they're totally actually different. In many places. And three, sometimes it's almost even like there's some uh, ill intent behind. Like, why would you change that? Amen. And in such a poor way. Okay, so Proverbs chapter 5. Now, we went through Proverbs chapter 5 pretty good when we were going through um, Satan's high fructose corn syrup, I called it. Uh, when we looked at what honey is not. And we're going to look at it again here now, but we're going to compare what we know the pure honey is versus the imposters. All right, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3, the King James Bible says, For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Remember before, we, we looked at the importance of the words as and like. You get, this is like this. I'm not saying that the two are I, exactly the same thing, right? When you say this is as this, it's a picture of it, but it's not literally saying that it's that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in chapter 5, verse 3, it says that the lips of a strange woman drop as and honeycomb. But we saw it tastes sweet, but it has a bitter end. It's not actual honey. It's fake honey. It's the fake stuff. Now, I want you to see, and if you're a, a, a brother or sister, and perhaps you have one of these modern versions at home, I encourage you to look through them. Yes, sir. Don't believe a word I'm saying. Check them out for yourselves. Uh, Cross-reference them against the King James Bible. <clears throat> at the very least, I want you go, coming away from this study and knowing these cannot be the same thing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Good, brother. So if something's pure, and then you've got something else over here that's close, but it's different, which one is pure? It's, it's pretty simple, actually. Yeah. All right, so the ESV and the NIV, I'm not going to bother with all the other hundreds of versions. I'm just going to stick on the ones that I know are most popular. I think ESV nowadays amongst Christians, especially Calvinists, and then NIV, like when I was growing up. They say that the lips of a strange woman, quote, drip honey. Huh. They drip honey. Wow. They drip honey. So you have another honey source right there. It doesn't say as honey. Do you under, hopefully you understand how important that is. It literally says that what comes off of her mouth is honey. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, we've looked at all kinds of stuff. No, that is not the case. It is poison. It's the poison of asps. Mm -hmm. It's the gall of asps. Yeah. It's uh, sweet in the beginning, but it's a bitter end. It le we'll look more here. Look at, uh, so look at verse 5. The King James Bible says, her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. This strange woman. Her steps take hold on hell. Okay. The ESV says, her steps follow the path to Sheol. What? Sheol? Is that the same as hell? I don't know. Like, even if I didn't, if I could go to anyone on the street and say, hey, oh, watch out. Looks like your feet are going down to hell. I might get punched in the face. I mean, I might get, you know, you never, <laughs> they might not like it, but they'll understand what I'm saying at least. But so, oh, watch out. Oh, you're, you're, it looks like you're about to slip in Sheol. Right. Whoa. That actually, I mean, whoa, I looked for the nearest dog or something. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Maybe I, I stepped on your pet dog that's a girl, that's a she, I don't know. But doesn't that sound a little watered down? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> KJV drop as in honeycomb. NIV, ESV, drip honey. Uh, that's kind of like, I'm, I'm weighing it, I'm tilting the honey here, and it's kind of moving a little fast for me there. Uh, the NIV, her steps lead straight to the grave. To the grave? Are you going to like a graveyard or something? Maybe you're going to, maybe you're going to visit your, your grandma or something, right? If I go, hey, watch out. You're heading for a grave. I'm, I'm going to look out for a tombstone. Right, right. I'll be like, what are you talking? Am I like in some weird like Indian burial ground or something? Like, <laughs> that is not the same as hell. Yes, sir. Yeah. Two things different cannot be the same. They're watering down the honey. Mm -hmm. And then ESV, Sheol, why do you got to say she? I thought we we're living in like so politically correct, like it's not a man, it's a woman now, right? <laughs> At least in the, that, that dirty old King James that's got those sodomite words and those bad words. At least our hell says he. Hell is for the men, amen, ladies? Yeah. <laughs> they say she, oh, oh man, she, that's, man. Not very sensitive after all, ESV. <laughs> and then uh, you, you guys saw S Sister Sheila on the WhatsApp this morning when she put that, uh, that verse. There's coming a day where those in the grave, mm -hmm. the graves are going to hear a trumpet and they're going to come up. So people in, people in hell are going to oh. come up. Everyone, everyone that's going to come up. It says when they come out of the graves, some are going to go to everlasting life, mm -hmm. some to everlasting torment. Mm -hmm. So that leaves like there's... 50-50 maybe. Or it could be you have a chance when you come up. Mm. You don't have a chance when you go to hell, brethren. Yeah. There's, right. no, there's no coming out of that. Mm. There's, there's no second chance. There's no purgatory. Mm -hmm. That's like some Catholic yeah. watered down stuff. Maybe they're just sprinkling the water. You know they like to sprinkle. Maybe they're just <laughs> sprinkling it a little bit. I don't know. All right, I'll move on. Uh, okay, verse 6. All right, we're still here. Verse 6. This, check this one out. Lest... Thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Mm -hmm. And we looked at that before. We looked at, you know, you got, a, you got the, the new honey fresh off the market. This one just came out. It's different than those other ones. No, you, you need this one. You need the new one right here. Oh, don't worry, about those don't worry about those mistakes that you dirty, filthy Baptist pointed out in the last, revi last revision. This one has them all taken care of. This one is the closest to the originals. Her ways are movable that you, cannot, you can't know them. Yeah, right. And that's, a, you got, that's some cult stuff right there. You ever look into any of these cults, man? It's just a guy just flying by the seat of his pants. Mm -hmm. And someone points it out. They're going to get rid of you, man. <laughs> They're going to make an example out of you. All right, so why are her ways movable, church? In case someone says that this is just my interpretation. That thou canst not know them. What is them? What's the beginning of the verse say? Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. You can't know what her ways are because they're always changing. Right. And they're always changing lest you should ponder the path of life. That's good. Mm -hmm. The ESV in that verse says, she does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander and she does not know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pray for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, my friend, she's out in the world. She's got that bumper sticker. All who wander are not lost. Oh, gosh. She's got the coexist. And she's just a poor <laughs> lost soul. But she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't think. She doesn't ponder the path of life. So her, her ways wander. And she doesn't know that her ways are wandering. Is that the same thing? No, sir. As what I said? No. Good point. Proverbs talking to the man of God. Right? talking to the child of God, says, lest thou, Christian, mm -hmm. should ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that 
thou, Christian, canst not know them. ESV makes it all about her. So one second they're tossing her into Sheol. The next it's all about her, man. That's the feminine spirit on these Bibles, man. Feminine. That Jezebel spirit. NIV, she gives no thought to the way of life. <laughs> she just needs someone just to love on her. Oh, man. Shoot her a text. <laughs> her paths wander aimlessly. But she does not know it. Wow. It's all about her. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you see how subtle that is? Wow. Mm -hmm. We looked at it before. If you need to go to part, go to part one if you want to see more about this. The Proverbs 5 lady here. You could also look at uh, Revelation 17. That might be a good place for you to look as well. Mystery Babylon, Jezebel, Ashtaroth, all the given. It's all the, it's all is Satan at the end of yeah. the day. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the very ver the very verse, Christian, that warns the child of God about the slippery steps, the cruel intent. See, they take away the intent. They say, oh, she just doesn't know what she's doing. She's just hurting herself, and she just she doesn't know. No, she knows exactly what she's doing. These translations, and again, if you're, if you're a Christian, you're using these modern versions, I'm not saying that this is you, okay? This is above your head. This is above, but it is up there with the principalities and the powers of the air and the darkness and high places. That's where it is. That's where it comes from. So I'm trying to get you away from that mess. Yes, sir. So the very verse that warns the child of God about the slippery steps, cruel intent, fluid ways, fluidity, okay, and watery, watered down, water, slish, slosh, slish, splash, and strange doctrine of the whorish woman is totally changed. It's no longer a warning to the young man of God, but sounds like a cry for help for the poor wandering girl who's simply unaware of her own behavior. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 27 and 28. You can turn over there if you have time. We're only a few pages away. But this is a good cross-reference. And uh, brethren, brothers and sisters who have modern versions, I'm going to start doing more cross-references with these modern versions. And I, I already know what I'm going to find. A word is a code. That's all, it, a word, that's all it is. So when you change a code, you take something out, the code is broken. So all the cross-references that I can do in my King James Bible are broken. The word of God is broken. Your honey is broken, man. It's nothing. And I want you to get the real honey. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23, look at verse 27. The Bible says, For a whore is a deep ditch. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. Just for, here we go. Get ready for all you that says, oh, she just doesn't know what she's doing. They mean well. Verse 28. She also lieth in wait as for a prey mm -hmm. and increaseth the transgressors among men. She knows exactly what she's doing. That's right. Ooh, she's good. That little Delilah. Mm -hmm. Oh, she knows what she's doing. That's good, brother. She knows exactly what she's doing. Paint it up, paint up the face, tire the, you know, all the stuff. Get, get ready, look nice, make it look real nice. Have the words sound nice and soft, water it down, mm. clean it up. She knows exactly what she's doing. Yep. All right, you want a good cross reference for that? Ephesians 4. Go over to Ephesians 4. Let's keep turning. This is fun, man. Amen. It's one thing if I say it, it's another if you see it. Yes, sir. You need to see the honey and you need to taste it. We looked at all those things before. You need, you need to taste it, try it, try the spirits in every way you possibly can. You need to weigh this thing out. You need to be tilting that honey in your hand. See how it looks. How, is it thick or is it watered down? Is it thin? Are they thinning some things out? I don't know. Taking out the flames of hell kind of seems like you're watering it down. I don't know. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 Look at verse 14. The Bible says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness 
whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So you better watch out that good godly Christian that you think uh, helps with that new translation might have different motivations than you think. They're lying in wait to deceive. Go over to James chapter 1. Good, and did you see that verse, how it, it, you could see it tossed to and fro, mm -hmm. kind of like the disciples on the sea, right? In the yeah. storm when Jesus comes walking by. It's, it's almost like the water was nice and thick and sturdy and unmovable and stable that Jesus walked on. Hmm. But these guys don't know any better. They don't know any better, so they're tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So when those storms of life come, they don't know what to do. They sink down like Peter. They step out on faith. I'll give you guys credit, and I love you. That's why I'm trying to, gi I'm trying to give you Jesus. I'm not Jesus, but I'm trying to give you Jesus' hand. Jesus is trying yeah. to go, hey, you can't get through it? Here, yeah. take this. And then you whoosh, watch. Try it out for a month. Try a King James Bible for a month and read the Psalms mm -hmm. and tell me you don't feel something different in your soul. Amen. Amen. Pray to the Lord about it. And that leads into our next verse, James chapter 1. The Mormons love to use this one, but we're not talking about some burning in your bosom. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Isn't that an interesting word? For he that wavereth is like a wow. wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. How's that for a cross reference? Yeah, that's real good. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So the reason that you're tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, the reason you have five different translations out and you just pick the one that you like the best that fits your message, because it's about your message, right? Oh, wow. It's about you up there, right? Mm -hmm. Look at, isn't the King James Bible beautiful? It takes, waver, it takes wavering and then it, oh, you don't know what wavering is? How about wavereth? Is that too hard? How about wave of the sea? In one verse, it teaches you, and it shows you perfectly, watch out for the watered-down honey. Don't be a watered-down Christian. That's good. Don't be carried about with every wind of doctrine, tossed to and fro. Don't be double-minded. That, to me, is one of the biggest problems in the, in the Christian world today, is we got a bunch of people that are yeah. double-minded. Even though even, you're looking at one. You, you try to serve God and do something spiritual, and one second, the next second, you're thinking of something totally fleshy or, or opposite. Right. Mm -hmm. You try to serve God, and, and, and yet you fall after the flesh again, or whatever it is. We got people that are double minded. Mm -hmm. And that's the definition. Double minded. Hmm. Which one, is, which one should I use? Right. Which one is the pure honey? Versus. This is the pure honey. Even if I was wrong, at least I'm not double-minded. At least I'm fixed and I'm settled on something. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm fixed and I'm going to go serve the Lord. If I'm wrong, whatever. Amen. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Amen. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to help me. I already know all this stuff. All right. Now, we're going to do, do a little branch off into another word here. All right? So I'll give you guys a break on honey, okay? <laughs> How about this word? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways that word unstable I call that a that's a watery word right there it occurs four times in the King James Bible Webster's 1828 says uh, unstable is uh, not stable not fixed wavering you think I'm stretching go to first the uh, go to Genesis 49 let's look at the first mention of unstable and now remember, if, you're, if you have a modern version, I, I honestly want to know, I'm not trying to get, get, in on, uh, get down on anyone. If you use a modern version, if, you, if that's what you believe in, I, I'm curious of something. 
Do you believe in or do you know of the law of first mention? I don't know if anyone in here that used to use a modern version, did you, had you ever heard of that before? No, sir. No. no idea. Never heard of it? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm about to show you something really cool if you'll, if you'll be open to it. Amen? I pray that you are. The King James Bible, the pure honey, has something called law of first mention, which is to say whenever you find a word for the first time in the Bible, that is going to set the course. It's going to set the theme for how that word is to be looked at all throughout Scripture. So I want to show you this just in case you think I'm stretching about making, calling unstable. That I call that a watery word. Genesis chapter 49, first mention of the word unstable. And look at verse 4. And this is Jacob speaking about Reuben here. And in verse 4 it says, unstable as what? Water. Unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel. You know the problem with these guys? Unstable as water, you're not going to excel. I said it before, I'll say it again. I believe you could get saved, you could, uh, you could get in a church, you could lead a Bible study, you could do your best to memorize, although it's funny enough, a lot of these people that use modern versions are only able to remember their King James verses from when they were children. You, I'm not saying you can't do anything, but I'm saying you're unstable, and you're not going to excel like excellent. God wants excellence from the Christian. He wants you to excel. You good at excel? That's good. That's going to work. The scale from 0 to 10, how would you say you are at excel? I can learn. <laughs> Please, I can learn. Give me a chance. Okay, thou shalt not excel. Why? Why will Reuben not excel? Why is he unstable as water? Because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defilest thou it, he went up to my couch. So uh, that sounds like someone done adulterated. <laughs> I don't know about you. That sounds like we got some watered down adultery mm -hmm. going on with that word there. Wow. Don't turn there. Second Peter 2.14 says, having eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. The people behind this guy, call it whatever you want. It doesn't have to just be NIV or ESV. Fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. New King James. Oh, the new King James. Just as good as the old one, but without the these and thous. Oh, yeah, come and get this one. The people behind your fill-in-the-blank Bible, your fill-in-the-blank version, they have eyes full of adultery. Mm -hmm. They went up to their father's bed and defiled it. They can't cease from sin. And they're beguiling, just like the serpent did with Eve, mm -hmm. they're beguiling unstable souls. That's you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Get fixed on me. I want, I want you to get stable. Amen. That's why I'm talking to you like this. All right, the last mention, go over to 2 Peter 3. The last mention of unstable. Isn't this amazing? I mean, you can, even, you can do a word study, and then another word pops out at you, and you're like, okay, well, let me do that one. Let me look at this one now. And I mean, it's to, uh, that's part four. I could do an infinity of these if I want to. <laughs> the, book never, the book never ends. This book, man, it's Don't the stop, pure, nonstop. It's the unsearchable riches. And yet, you want to search it. Amen? Amen? Oh, man, I love this book. Thank you, Lord. All right, so 2 Peter. And we're going to look. This is the last mention. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. And look at verse 16. As also in all his epistles, this is Peter speaking of Paul. Speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, W-R-E-S-T, like WrestleMania, rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Some of you are having a hard time right now. I'm sorry. 
Some of you are coming off the ropes like Hulk Hogan or, or The Rock or whoever you I remember those guys, you know. You're, you want a Stone Cold Stunner me right now, man. But hey, is Austin 316, is that viable? No, sir. How do you know? How do you know? Maybe it is in some weird version out there. Maybe they got a WWE version. <laughs> I don't know, man. Some of you are having a hard time and you're wrestling with these things. Listen up, I love you. You're wrestling with these things. You're unstable and unlearned, that's why. And I understand that some of this is hard to be understood. But the Bible says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings is to search it out. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which speak of me. So why aren't you searching? Why aren't you looking into it? Look up the verses. Do the cross-references. See if I'm wrong. All right. All right. Now, Amen. check this out. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before. Okay, listen up, Christians. You know, you know this before. Beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Doesn't the Bible say something like in the last days, or many are going to fall away. There's going to be apostasy. They're going to fall from the faith. And in this verse, immediately after it's talking about those that are unlearned and unstable, resting the scriptures to their own destruction, it gives a warning to Christians, in the, in, to Christians to b beware lest ye also, so you're not above it. Mm -hmm. There's King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent, dispensational, Baptists that are falling away all the time. Mm -hmm. A little bit of compromise here, a little bit of leaven here. All of a sudden, you don't need the King James. You can, you know, I, I've, I've literally, I've, I've known a few people who were King James only, and then they fell out of church, Next time I talk to him a few months later, I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily think you have to, it has to only be, only the King James Bible has a corner on the market of truth. You see that? Did you see that spirit? Mm -hmm. Someone's got a problem with authority, man. Yeah. The problem is they want to be the authority. Now, look in verse 18. So don't, beware, unless you get led away and fall from your own steadfastness, your stability. Verse 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Mm. That's what God wants you to do. He doesn't want you to fall. He wants you to grow. Amen. He wants you to grow. All right. And I'm going to bring it home here. Maybe we'll just look at a, one little part of this next test. The next test. All right. We check for thickness. What do you think? How'd the modern versions do? They thick? Are they as thick as this guy? Is it, a, does it, is it thick in here? Amen. I'm sure you're <laughs> watching at home. Is it thick where you are? God dwells in the thick darkness, the thick cloud. It's hard for you to wade through and find some of these things. I understand, but you're instructed to do it. The words are not supposed to be watered down to where the first time you read it, you understand everything. Mm -hmm. Do you honestly, like... Uh, do you, do you look at your life like that? Do you expect that the first time you do something, you're going to fully understand it and it should just be brought down to your level? This is like, no offense, but like, you know those for dummies books that were all the right? Like you literally, by definition, the people that put out your books marketed it as being easier to understand, right. which means the people that buy those are dumb. <laughs> They can't understand a fifth grade reading level. They can't understand the same book that the guys in the prisons who, interesting, they don't, they do everything they can to keep them away from the Bible when they grow up until they get in prison. Then all of a sudden throw a Bible at them. Those guys read, the, those guys can read. People learn how to read from this book, yeah. man. Like you're admitting, I, I saw there's so many different versions. There's, it's called easy to read version. Are you a college graduate? Are you a high school graduate? I barely graduated high school, man. I was, I didn't want to be in school. I had to like hustle just to 
gra- like finish this one class and then I could walk and graduate. I'm an idiot. I'm not smart. Amen. The Lord taught me things, yes, man. Mm-hmm. That's your problem. It's not a physical, intellectual, mental exercise. These are spiritually discerned words. And that's why you're having such a hard time. You got the wrong spirit on your book. All right, so we check for thickness. Now the next one is check for stickiness. And we only, I only got like another few minutes and I'm done. So I might just show you this one part. Check for stickiness. If the honey feels sticky when you rub it between your fingers, it's adulterated. Why? The added sweeteners make it sticky. So something was added to the honey, which makes it sticky. So is it safe to say stickiness is bad? If, I, if I'm taking that to the Bible, okay, it says if it's really sticky, that's bad. So then I thought, okay, sticky is not in the Bible, is it? So I looked sticky, sticky, no, it's not in, not in our Bible. Maybe it's in yours, you know, it's sticky. Maybe it's in your Bible, it's not in ours. But then I thought about, I thought about like Proverbs where it says like a friend sticketh, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, so I know that there's the concept of something sticking, you know, it's in there. So let me do a word search on, search on stick. Amen? Amen. Not rocket science. Mm-hmm. We did honey. We did a little bit of unstable. I'm going to do, what is a, I don't know, what's a stick? Yeah. <laughs> if you just don't think you're above this stuff right. and you just humble yourself and ask God, what, what about yeah. this, Lord? Mm-hmm. You'll get answers, man. Right. <laughs> okay, so stick. So we're looking for, uh, they're adding something, right? which makes it sticky. The word stick occurs 21 times in all forms of your King James Bible. And the first mention, don't turn there, is Numbers 15.32. Now, I want a a little bit of participation here, okay? I'm putting you guys on the spot. Numbers 15.32 says, And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness... They found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Good or bad? Bad. bad. Something good about to happen? Got some sticks. Yeah, man. Got to, you ever find a cool stick on a walk? Like, oh, yeah, I'll just walk with this a little bit. So you get tired of it. Maybe you keep it like outside of your house for a little bit. Uh, no, yeah, the sticks and stones may break my bones. This guy's about to know what that thing is yeah. talking about. Okay, so the first mention of the word stick has to do with, uh, there was a word for a bundle of sticks when I was growing up. Has to do with a guy gathering sticks upon the Sabbath day. And why is he going to get stoned? Because in Exodus 35, 3, it says, And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words, there's that honey, which the Lord hath commanded, that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall, be, uh, there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Verse 3, ye shall kindle, like kindlings, no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And then if you uh, just go just a little bit behind there, Numbers 15 and verses 30 and 31, maybe to give you a better understanding of uh, why, you're like, man, this guy was just picking up sticks. He gets stoned? That's kind of crazy. Well, they knew that it was supposed to be a Sabbath day to the Lord. They knew not to gather and uh, kindle any fire in their habitations. And in verses 30 and 31, it mentions, you see the word presumptuously, reproacheth the Lord. Because he despiseth the word of the Lord and hath broken his commandment. It doesn't matter if it's eating a fruit off a tree or right. picking up a stick. Right. It doesn't matter. What matters is God told you mm-hmm. and you disobeyed. You despise the word. You, so remember we looked all before. Don't add anything. Don't take anything away. So what are you doing gathering sticks, man? <laughs> What are you doing gathering stuff and adding it together? Maybe you're trying to kindle a nice fire to keep everyone warm. Who cares? And, uh, the, oh, by the way, that whole gathering sticks thing. The NIV, 
Maybe this will, this will be a floater for next time. The NIV, the word stick occurs 25 times. So five times five, five being the number of death. The first mention is not Numbers 15. You don't see the word stick show up until 1 Samuel 17, verse 43, when David is coming against Goliath, and Goliath says, you come at me with sticks? Wow. That's Goliath, a type of the Antichrist, questioning David, a type of Christ, and calling him a stick. This guy is gathering stick. Remember, there's like a word for that, right? Goliath is calling David a stick. He's saying, David is sticky. You know what the KJB, KJB calls him? Go over there. We'll end it with this. We'll end it with this one right here. And this will, this will kind of float it to the next word we're going to look at next time. But it all has to do with the stickiness. Uh, 1 Samuel 17. I mean, this stuff is so subtle that you'll miss it. Mm. And you won't know just how evil and wicked these changes are. You're messing with my type, man. You're messing with my picture of my God. Calling him a stick? What does the King James Bible call him? 1 Samuel 17, verse 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. It doesn't call David a, a stick. It calls him staves. And you might be wondering, what in the world does that mean? And that's what I was thinking. Stave, what's a stave? It's fun when you just own how dumb you are. <laughs> and you don't go throw your Bible away and get a new one. You look up the word from the Bible that you have. We'll get into it next time. But I'll leave you with this. Staves occurs 49 times in the King James Bible, 7 times 7. Mm -hmm. The first mention of it, you can look this up if you want, but we're ending right here. The first mention of it is in relation to the most important physical object in the Old Testament, the Ark of God. Any dots connecting for you Bible believers? Mm -hmm. Exodus 25, 13. And that, this is the first mention. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. Oh, remember honey and gold? Dr. Ruckman's note, the shittim wood is supposed to be the acacia wood in Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula. It is close-grained and insect-proof. As a type of Christ, it is incorruptible. So we're going to leave you with this. One Bible calls David a stick. And it's a type of the Antichrist, Goliath, calling the type of your God a stick. A stick, where the King James Bible says a stick is that amongst those other sticks that that guy gathered and got stoned. Negative reference. Negative. Bad. Don't gather the sticks. <coughs> Antichrist calls type of Christ stick. Man. But then King James Bible, even out of the type of the Antichrist's own mouth, he calls him a stave, which occurs 49 times. It has to do with the Ark of God. Specifically, uh, a stave, which is made of wood and overlaid with gold. I will leave you with that. You can go pray about it for a little bit, and we'll look at it next time. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the pure honey. I, can never, I never get tired of it. I'll never stop thanking you for it, Lord. I pray that whoever's watching this that either is yet to be convinced I pray that over the course of showing them these many infallible proofs, Lord, that they'll get rid of the fake adulterated honey, toss it in the garbage, and get some pure, 100% incorruptible, infallible, inerrant, pure words of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.